fun chaos. Um, right, it's it's Jacobson, your surname, yeah. right, Mads? Yeah. yeah. And it's Grunla, right? <laughs> Grunla. Well, see, no, you have to have Mad say it because he's the, he's the only one that actually sounds like me normally, or all, like all the other commentators, and then just crushes with so much awesomeness all of the Europeans' like last names in yes. the dialect that they actually say it, which blows me away. So, like, I've done I've done shows and and, and commentary with with Mads. And he will be talking about someone, and sometimes he will say it so uh, linguistically perfect based on the, the dialect and the region of the country that they're in that I don't know who the heck he's talking about. But the funny thing is that athletes will come up to me and be like, hey, did you hear Bill said, said my name? I'll be like, yeah, so did I. But like, yeah, you sound like everybody else around here. But Bill said it, which is awesome. Which is like, me saying it all messed up, and I'm like, that in the no. S and the Vs and the, the – amp thing on top and the, <laughs> but you sound that the, you sound the way they want to sound when they get famous yeah. I'm, I'm a reminder of the amateur, amateur days <sighs> i love American that, that, that. <laughs> yeah we, i want to hear so, my yeah, name was, butchered yeah <laughs> it was like i was at these local shows and this local dude was like saying my name which was great but then hey i made it on the big stage and guess who was saying my name then yeah. Well, and that was well, the guess one who that was, was trying to say my name. Back. Right. No, that's exactly what it is. So we did the the Norwegian throwdown. Yeah. Uh, that one year, which was um, it was so fun. Um, <laughs> but every like all of the, all of the names, all of the names had a crazy. It was all European. I mean, there were there were a couple people that were there. You know, a couple like Americans, but I mean, not many, or not names that you wouldn't really know. And I mean, Mads was just crushing the name I'm like, I, it's a good thing you're here dude because otherwise it would take me half the time trying to read all of the letters all the 26 letters of each last name it's like holy cow well, well can we launch out a conspiracy theory here then that you know how everyone's kind of like oh crossfit it's so american centric and it's it's so skewed to america and and actually you know why aren't they giving other countries more spots and why america gets everything is it just because there's this fear of, oh, we're going to have to learn these names. It's going to be a nightmare. If we've got more people coming from Europe. Oh, that's more names we've got to learn. Oh, we just stick it with the Americans. We know their names. It's absolutely fine. You want, you want to know a funny one? Well, I, I mean, that's a great conspiracy theorist. I, what it is normally is not that we want to keep it that way, but like we'll see the names come up and it always the broadcast would be like, Oh shit. Okay. Let me practice this one. Let me practice this one. I mean, like, you know, guys like Sean, he can read those names off great. So he's usually pretty good about that kind of stuff. But I mean, th this year, this year, all, no, actually, it was Wadapalooza. It was the first time I've heard Tola's name said differently. How many years has that guy been in the space now? We've been saying Tola Marquino all this time. And now it's uh, more and more, more rocking yo. Yeah. More. And it's like, well, shit. At least tell us if you want us to say it another way, another day, another way. You know, come on. We we're trying. We don't want to butcher. People are just being thing. nice. I mean, I mean it's hard just being really, really nice, but it's hard. Yeah, it I'd is hard. Somebody come up to me and be like, you know, you just butchered my name. It wasn't cool. Could you do this better, better next time? But they don't. They just like, yeah, you did the best you could. Like, let me know instead. I mean, we like, try, uh, and we don't take yeah. offense if we say it bad. We'll, we get pissed if someone's like. Dude, can you say the name right? I'm like, I've never even seen this name before. Like, just give me a chance. I'll, yeah. you know, I'm, 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 I want we all, everyone on the broadcast, everyone wants to say the name right. Yeah, I mean, but even that's crazy because you think, you you know, people are watching, and like if you say somebody's name wrong, that reflects bad on you. It doesn't reflect bad on the person whose name you've said right. wrong. So totally. why would you? It's not like you're deliberately going, oh, I'm gonna absolutely butcher this. That that'll be fun. <laughs> you know, like, it was crazy. I've done, uh, <laughs> I've done uh, the age group games, and you'll have the teens in there, uh, the the younger kids, and they're doing their thing, and I'll say someone's name wrong, and the parents will blast you on on Instagram. All of a sudden, I look down and I have like fifteen, you know, in you know DMs, and they're all parents. My child's name is. I'm like, God, sorry, man. I'm not. It's not about. I'm not trying to hack your kid's name. And then you meet, and then you meet the kid afterwards, and the kid's like, "Hey, dude, you called me out. I thought it was awesome." Right. You're like, yeah, yeah, you should talk to your mom and dad because they, they they're, yeah, they're pissed. You know, they're, they're pissed really at me. upset with me right now. Yeah. Here's, here's all the athletes we ignored. So that's your other option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I missed a couple Joneses, a couple Smiths. So, yeah. 
and then you know the good thing is you'll you'll get their name wrong uh youtubers will pick up on it and they'll you know make a whole video about how you butchered this person's name uh, now uh, they're even you know we would have missed it if you'd got the name right maybe we'll never hear it again but now <laughs> now we know um one those, thing I should... those are our 15 minutes of fame exactly yeah, yeah. what well, and i mean final thing on the name is that i people get my name like you know i'm i mean i didn't even think you even had a English last name people... you're like madonna dude what are you talking yeah. about yeah well that's <laughs> <laughs> the other day i i was on um i mean he listens to this so he might be upset about this now but i was on um the box jump is it box jumper podcast box jump over podcast. i always want to say box jump over but it's box jumper podcast okay um i think chase has been on there as well in the past um so i was on that and he you know that was great and then he put out a really nice kind of you know the image and all the blurb and all of that but he put my surname wrong and i just let it slide because i was just like you know what <laughs> Maybe it's better that people don't know exactly how to spell my name. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. It gives you a little bit of anonymity, man. You got to keep a little, you know. And when, when I went on, um, when I went on uh, Death by, uh, Lauren Kilo knew my surname, so she, you know, announced me with my full name. Right. And they were like Chase and Justin and all of that. They're like, whoa, whoa, we didn't even know you had a. <laughs> right. <laughs> After Chase had finished booing, there was a moment of, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't know your surname. So wh one thing I. I do have to do, um, and I will. This will be an interesting edit. Is usually I start by having my guests kicked out of the room, and I introduce them one by one, and I bring them on. And I didn't do that, but we'd already started recording, and it was all good. So what what I'm going to do now is say, "Welcome to Plate Stack Chat, everyone." The podcast where I, Jason, am joined by two wonderful guests. And if you hadn't guessed at this point, <laughs> <laughs> this week uh, I'm joined by the lovely Bill Grunler who's just appeared as if by magic, Mads Jacobson. He's he's here somewhere. There he is. <laughs> and it's actually good because usually I write like a blurb as well to introduce them. And, and I, I kind of enjoy that. That's like a fun part is like looking through people, kind of trying to find interesting things about people. Uh, Mads, you're really hard to write uh, kind of a blurb for because you seem to have done everything and anything within the world of CrossFit <laughs> and it's kind of quite hard to narrow down and for Bill it was very much going to be just about how he's the better half of get with the programming and and you know we've had to endure I having mean, Chase I'll on the podcast yeah. Chase might get a little pissed but I'll take that I'll take that so right, he's already come on so it's fine right <laughs> it's too and late Chase for him to backtrack it. now he may be upset but he knows it he knows it, yeah. it doesn't make it not right <laughs> So, uh, gents, welcome. Uh, I guess we Thank should you. quickly just touch on the open. How's it going? Go, Mads, go. Well, I'm not. <clears throat> I'm 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 pretty heavily medicated at the time, so I'm not doing the open. Um. So, so yeah. So for my part, it's going great. And the athletes that I've had the pleasure of being of programming for a while now, they're crushing it. Uh. So that's good. But for on my own, I'm just watching it from the sidelines. Watching from the sidelines. Yeah. We we will come back to that. Because we have questions. <laughs> we have questions. Huh. I mean, that's how cruel <laughs> how cruel life is, is that you told us something that genuinely we have like questions that are not just questions of like this is great content, but like, oh really? Wow, that's really oh yeah. Are you okay? We want to hear about this. <laughs> but let's save it for the podcast. Let's make let's sure do that. Let's, do let's that. make sure it is also content. Um, Bill, you've obviously predicted very well the open this year, um, particularly twenty four point one. Which yeah, is a horrendous. Um, uh, I, I, you know what? I, we yes, gotta wait. There's to no see. archery in the open. I'm so sorry. No, I know. Once I they know. put that I in, know. you'll be happy. But, <laughs> um, but I'm ready. I'll be ready for it. I'll be ready for it. Um, I was really excited about. Um, I was really excited about the open this year, especially. I, I, I talked to Dave. I was at this class, and Dave was there, um, up in Northern California, and. We were talking about it, and it was really fun to see how excited he was about the Open and to see his genuine, like, oh, man. it's When someone that does has done the majority of the programming for our competitive space, at least on the, on the games uh, season side, says that he's excited not about the complexity but about the intensity of what it's going to be. I got really excited about that because he seemed excited. And if he's excited, then I think it's going to be in the realm of what he would normally do so when the first one came out um man dude i was really excited about what it was i really liked what it was i liked how it connected you know it was it was very inclusive um it was very intense dr intensely driven 
Um, it wasn't complex. Um, we had done something like that before. I remember when, when uh, all the COVID stuff was going on, there was a thruster burpee over the dumbbells kind of a thing, same kind of the deal. So I knew what it would be. I knew that was really fun. And I thought that was literally the perfect way to start it. And then we got to the second one and I'm not really happy about it right now, even though, and I don't know if it's because I'm not happy because I didn't get to predict it right. And Peter was a little closer at, at Peter was <laughs> closer at predicting it than I was. Um, but uh, I mean, so far it's so good, I guess we, we got one more to see what they're going to do. Um, I'm having fun just doing it. Like I, I'm not in any sort of training shape or, or anything like that. Um, and for me, what's weird is I'm in the 55 division now. And Mads, they have me doing a 35 pound dumbbell. <laughs> I refuse to pick up a 35 pound dumbbell unless we I'm demoing. In Norway. I do not. I, seriously, right? Unless I'm yeah. demoing a movement, I will not yeah. do a workout. You're training with a 35 pound dumbbell. I won't. Nope. So, so did you I, think about just demoing 24.1 to the class? No. <laughs> no actually, you know what? You know what's funny? I did. And it looked a lot like uh, Lucas Hogberg when he was making fun of the, the standard with like the Jean-Claude Van Damme super mega split. Yeah. So I'm right on the ground and it was I, I did it. I, I didn't even bend over. Just I bopped the thing up and down <laughs> 21 times. And I'm like, that's I'm not doing it. I won't do it. So I did nope. that one with the regular weight. I did the, the last one with the 185 on the deadlift and the regular weight. And I, I'm just. I'll, I'll and I don't know what that means score wise. I put RX. I mean, I guess technically it's not RX. So I apologize if that messes up anybody oh. else's, uh, you know, leaderboard stuff or twenty five percent or whatever it is. But I don't know. We're here. I know my I know my, my members are having a good time. They're having they're having fun with it. So that's that's important. It's interesting, like the number of lenses you can look at the open through, because obviously you've got like as an affiliate, you know, owner. It's sort of like oh. Uh, this is a, a really easy, you know, so far it's been two workouts that you haven't needed much square footage to set up right. the actual workout. So it's like, you know, there's a, do a row here, double unders there, there's a barbell, uh, you know, a snatch here, burpee over it. Like it. It's very easy on that sense of it. So you can look at it like, yeah, this will be good. I, I can see how I can run a lot of members through, you know, uh, then you've got it as your well, we do a podcast where we predict programming, where we talk about programming a lot. So I've got my own biases on how I look at the incoming. And if I predict it, then obviously it was the perfect open workout. <laughs> if someone else predicts it, it was probably a terrible workout. Terrible. Uh, then you've got the fact that you've, you know, you've had these conversations with Dave. So you've kind of got anticipation maybe that other people don't have because oh, I saw how excited he was. And I'm like, Oh, you're excited about that. Oh, that. <laughs> right. Well, you, now, you're, you, now you're changing your opinion on Dave. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wow. think, I think what's, uh, and you tell me what you think, Mads. I mean, you've been seeing this stuff a long time, but I think that the weird thing about the open or the difficult thing about the open is that it has so, it has more roles to play in our space than any of the other competitions like the game is the games is easy find the fittest on the planet done and you do it with you know hard fast heavy short long weird new objects new implement whatever like that's the place to really do that um and then you go on the very opposite end of the spectrum which is this like the open is supposed to be the widest net we can cast okay so to get everybody included you can't go you know, above and beyond crazy new movements and in and, and crazy weights and crazy technic technical movements. But at this but at the same time, it's gotta be a competitive race for your high end athletes, a good race for your general crossfitter, and a an inviting race for new people. And that is a tough position to be in. And the fear that I have is that when when it's being programmed especially if it's not being programmed in a stream from open to quarters to semis to the games, that that, that storyline gets lost and we end up having just events in the open. And if, if none of them are heavy at all, I mean, like the other thing is since we brought the scale division in, like why do we have to limit it so hard with the weights or the movements or whatever? So, I mean, 
I really feel that even though that this is now the with the twenty five percent that qualifies on or that that advances on, like this is our fitness fun run. It's not the big race; it's the fun run, but it's a really important fun run yeah. with all of the things that need to happen. And that because of that, I think that it can't be overlooked. And this is one of the things that we're going to have in in uh, me and Chase have, have been talking about this show a lot is. I don't feel that the different stages have a mission statement of what they're really trying to do. And so we're, we're, we have been working on designing that. And if they want to take it cool, they, you know, the CrossFit can just like when we're doing our, our strength of field CrossFit wants to take it cool. They can take it. If they don't, we're going to show everyone how, how it can work, should work, how we think it should work, whatever. Um, But it's important. And I don't want to see, you know, high end athletes go like, this is just stupid, man. I don't want medium athletes to be like, that's the way, or guys in my, my, in my age division, that's the weight we're using. I mean, yeah, holy no. shit. Like we just did, a, we did 10 to one, one to 10, you know, a couple of years ago of deadlifts and uh, deadlifts and burpees. And that was 225, 155. Yeah. And I now like, the like heaviest that weight. Yeah. That was a great one. Now the heaviest weight we're doing is 185. Uh, yeah. That was a mess. I don't know. No, but I think I think I think to your point, Bill. I think the the conspiracy theories about why the open is what it is comes from a lack of communication about what it is you can expect from the open, and I think that is a, that is a huge problem because right now, I don't know if we're trying to make the open as inclusive as possible because there is an investment side of this that wants the participation throughout the entire open to be as high as possible, and that's what we're trying to cater to, or is it because we genuinely, genuinely want the first part of this to be as inclusive as possible. And then when we get to the quarterfinals, let's start chop, chopping away and let's start making it heavier and whatever, whatever. Like if that was communicated, then there would be no speculation. But as soon as there isn't, we get speculation. And it's like, it, it's just classic leadership. It's like, we're, if we're all moving in one direction, we're getting communica- communication and we're guided by somebody who's telling us where to go, we're all going to go there. And our minds are going to pre- be preoccupied with going in that direction. As soon as we stop, which is when communication stops, we're going to start looking left, right, and center. And we're going to start exploring that gray area that we shouldn't explore. And I think that's what everybody's doing. And it's taken a bit of the beauty away from the open. And I think that's, well, that's, that's a challenge. No, you're, you're right. I, mean, I, I, I totally agree with that. In, in the last couple of years, that's what we've seen is a disconnect in that storyline. Like Dave used to talk about all the time. And even he, when he wrote the book, when he did the programming, like it was cool to see that line. He always talked yeah. about there's a thread that runs all the way through from the open to the games. And that I think that that was something that was really important. Yeah. Because you had, you could kind of see, okay, what sort of athlete are we trying to move to the next stage? And then what sort of athlete are we trying to move to the next stage? As of right now, all I, all I've seen, I mean, and I know that the, the rowing is the tall guy piece. Like I get it. Um, but even with that, the two event, the two pieces that we have so far is you don't need to be a very strong athlete. You need to be a, a, a conditioned athlete. You need to have someone that that is an engine, yeah. and that's the only piece that's moving. And I, again, individually, it's not that I don't like the workouts. I just think that you have to look collectively of what we're doing. I mean, we have one more to do, yeah. and I'm fearful that it's going to be a classic something short frannish looking type of thing in a one rep max lift on top of that to cover the bases of what well, we lifted heavy. Yeah. And I, I just, I mean, we've said it for years. Me and Chase have said it every year. We're coming up on four years of our podcast and we've said it every year that, that, that way that it's been done, we found, we have found so many problems with scoring that way. Yeah. And I don't really think it gets the right people or the right athlete to move on. I think they should be fit. Yeah, totally. But saying, well, the fittest people will get in there and you know, it's 25%. So everyone can do that is a, that is a cop out answer, not a correct answer. I, I think no. it doesn't, that doesn't hit on like you kind of, again, we're, that, that, that works when we are talking about the fittest and those that will go through to the games and that, but it's like the personal competitions you have, you know, like, so you go in, cause I know last year I would, you know, I'll go in every morning, Friday morning, I go in and do the open workout. That's my routine. So I go in and it means that the similar people that go in Friday morning and do the workout, we're kind of, oh, how did you get on this one? How did you get on that one? And you're having these little, you know, friendly little battles, aren't you, throughout the open? 
So like that one rep map thruster, I hated that because <laughs> there were people that I, you know, I beat by a little every workout, but they out thrusted me by so much that it just tanks your score. And it's like, oh, well now they're so far. Cause you've got some people that can just lift a lot of weight. Yeah. And, and it just skews the leaderboard so much. Well, so, yeah, um, you don't have, you don't I'm have really enough, hoping we don't get that. This you year, don't have but. enough events to balance it out. There shouldn't yeah. be a single modality anything. And I, that's not just heavyweight. And we, we say this all the time. Like, it's not about the one rep max. If it was a max handstand push-ups or max pull-ups or max – even I mean, honestly, seven minutes of burpees. It's the same thing. Anytime you have one item, then you are now catering to a specialist. And you cannot have a specialist competition in a three event, 300,000 person competition. You can't do it because you are going to, just like you said, you're going to have those skews where I suck in everything, but I'll get like first and second in the heavy thruster. And now your numbers are ruined because of what I can do on one event out of the yeah. whole thing. That's not fitness. Yeah. This also should be the getting, getting first and second isn't like, you know, at the games where it's like, oh, well, they got first and I got 20th. Well, they got first and I got 30th. It's right. Like, oh, they got first and I got 300,000. That's right. the, <laughs> it's going to really tank my score. Yeah. But that's where it gets challenging, challenging because we've only got three events, right? And then the next thing is that we're trying to be as inclusive as possible, but we don't want to use too much, too much equipment either. And it also has to be camera savvy so that it, everything kind of fits in. You don't have to have a camera person to document what it is. So, I mean, there, there's so many parameters. I mean, I'd like, I'd like to see more. Remember when the Open was five weeks? I thought yeah. that was better. I thought it was a lot better because it opened up some more doors. Right now, it's like we have to do everything in three, within these three workouts. I mean, that's, that's hard. It's really, really hard. Yeah, but Matt, it's easy to say that you'd like a five-week Open when you're just watching from the sidelines. <laughs> Even when I was doing him, I always felt like, because I'm a miserable athlete, so I, I always kind of had, you know, the last thing that leaves anybody is hope. So my hope was always that, hey, next week there's going to be something at least where I can yeah. kind of make a little bit of a move. Never happened, but that's the difference. Thing. Well, in, in, in you're right, Mads. Like when you had five, you had more opportunities to do different things. And that, <laughs> that made it to where the, the effect of one event is lessened by the other events by doing yes. that. When you have yes. three, it becomes crucial about how you program about what you're doing. It's, and this is, again, I, I, the 25% thing, um, you know, whether people want to say money grab, not money grab, regardless, it doesn't really matter what the number is it's moving on, but that can't be your answer about like, okay, we're letting more people move forward. So the programming doesn't count. It does count. No. It, it, it definitely counts. In fact, it, it's really important if, your pool of people is so large because of those swings that you're going to have. And you're going to have someone who's really good at this one thing. And then they're not really good at this thing over here. So now it's like, all right, so how do you blend that in the way that you blend that? I think, and this is, I mean, this is my own nerdy program, Atrani kind of thing is um, you can have, you know, your, your different time domains, but I think, I think they miss the boat because if this was our long one, this should have been the stop gate of weight. I mean, we, we've seen it like with when we did the um, uh, double unders, toes of bar uh, squat clean. Mm. That, that was one of the best open workouts program because everybody got to play. Everybody was able to hit a weight that they could start with and they moved forward. And you had to earn, you had to earn your weight on that. Now, granted, there was uh, time gaps also. So for some people, it took 20 minutes. For some people, it took eight minutes in that particular year because they couldn't get past that. Yeah. Um, and there, there are ways to mess with that. But even if, they, even if they wanted to do this particular event, the exact same way, same movements, you, why not increase the weight of the deadlifts? We've done that on box jump deadlift ones. Make yeah. it count or at least increase the number. Like you have to do something to where that matters because as of right now, no weight has counted. There's been zero weight to it. So yep. we ruined our long one. What are we going to do? Uh, it, like, that's what makes me think that the last <laughs> one is going to be a two piece where it's going to be a one rep max thruster, a one rep max clean and jerk, a one rep max, which I'm just tired of seeing. Yeah. Tired of seeing it. Weighted pull up. Can we have that? 
one at max weighted pull up and then God, it no, would be different. Can you imagine how I mean that. you imagine yeah, the judging on that would be terrible. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean do it I'm at just, the games I mean, when you only have ten athletes. Do it there. I'm just I'm just, I'm just yeah. personally thinking for myself. <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean I would it would be fun. It would be fun. Yeah. But that's that's the hard part is like I just feel if it's again, a one rep if it does become like a one rep max, I would if I could pick anything for the one rep max, I would like it to be a snatch and it has to be a full snatch because at least then I, I always feel particularly when it's something so mass participation is that you're going to have guys are just strong that can just grip and rip a clean and will clean a lot of weight, but at least we're like a full snatch because of the technique. It, there's this balance, like you're still going to lift more than me because you're a lot stronger than me. But it's not going to be as insanely more because there's a kind of this nice balancing of, well, you've got to be able to catch it in the bottom of the of the overhead squat. You've got to be able to stand it. You know, there's. But I, I wouldn't envision seeing that in the open. Mads, that's if you what I pick, would like personally. If you, if you had, okay, okay, I actually like. I mean, I like anything overhead and overhead squat position. I like generally speaking, um, not for myself, but I mean, just as a good test. <laughs> yeah. But Mads, yeah. if you had to pick a one rep, a one rep lift of whatever. What would what would you want it to be? And it can be, I mean, anything you want. I'm just it's a it's a max weight of whatever. And that, I mean, you could it could make it be a complex. It could be a particular lift. What would you if you had to pick it? What would you pick? Front squats. Really? Why? I just I just love it. It just becomes. You need to position yourself right. You need to be strong. It's upper back. It's lower back. It's it's kind of driving. It, yeah, I'd, I'd say that. Probably. You wouldn't pick a complex over that. Not not at this point. I'd, I'd I'd save that for the twenty five percent that move on because I think they're they'll be better conditioned for and I'd like to I'd rather see that at that point because it it then becomes a bo bit more skill but yeah you know what I pick I'd, I'd pick the the true bear complex oh I'd love to see that on the twenty five percent that move on though I would no, love see, to see so that I want I want the front squat I want the one rep max front squat for the 25%. I don't want that to I don't want that to move them in. I want someone I want a general fitness of the 25 to move in. I, I, they got to be strong. They got to have conditioning. Um if I had if and, and I'm saying I I don't want it to be a one anything, but if I had to pick one I would pick that. You have yeah. you have whatever. 7 minutes, 10 minutes to figure out what it is so you can figure out what weight. And that's seven like I'm talking old school. The seven yeah. rep yeah. version of the the clean the front squat the shoulder you know the 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 yep. push press the back yep. squat the push press from the back and no touching on the ground or, or it's only tap and go off the ground something like that have the demo be Freddie Camacho when he was doing that the OH right game. him and, yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah him and Jolie Gentry yes you know like the original yes. video put that one out there and I do love that this is bad, coming out bad idea after we all have heard the workout <laughs> people are listening to this going oh bill that would have been great unfortunately this is what we got <laughs> unless <laughs> unless what would be great no 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 if, if, it they, if all of a sudden they do it yeah then i'm gonna be a genius no if it happens, <laughs> then we know that you've got the inside story. right well yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll cut the bit earlier where that. we heard you you were speaking to dave about how excited he was for the programming and we'll be like oh hold on a second uh, maybe dave let uh, a few things slip here because this is uh i need you know there's a cut that needs to be made where it's like there's a phone going off and bill is like uh could you excuse me for a second and then it's like he forgets to turn it off and be like yeah, yeah. Is that what we're doing? All right. Oh, cool. bear complex. Good idea. <laughs> bear complex. Sounds great. Is that All five right, reps or seven back. reps? Yeah. Yeah. Doing? Five <laughs> or seven. What? What is it? Remind me of the bear complex. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what would be a good video to use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah. cool. Welcome back. Guys, Bill I'm Brenda. back. I still don't know what we're doing Friday, but hey, I'm back again. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my nose already does that anyway, dude. What are you yeah. talking about? Dude, you're not alone. Nothing <laughs> 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 um, so, Mads. Yeah, you are. By the way, it's it's really nice to to talk to you again. I think I, the last time I saw you was semi finals in London. Yes. You were you were teamed up with Tommy on yep. the on the broadcast. Yeah, and I was yeah. I was just working as a spotter on the broadcast, just going, yeah, he's he's pretty good. Point the camera yeah, at him. You, that was you. Sh you shared a bunch of bunch of notes and a bunch of stats on on athletes, which was amazing. What it uh, was. I I cannot take credit for that. So that is Tom, who is the savant on all of these kind of things um, <laughs> well, tom, tom is a savant but you're the one who shared it so hey uh, there we go it's a lot of shared love 
Um, and then, I mean, I was I was thinking about this the other day. Of may, maybe I need to make my DMs like public or like a behind a paywall. You can just come and read the dip because, like with Bill, it's just been me saying, "Bill, when could you come on on the podcast?" And he said very specifically, like early on, he immediately said, "This is the time I am free." And then probably about four times I've sent him messages going, "What about this time?" Because I've got a kid come on this time. He's like, no. Well, what about this time? And eventually I've sent him a message going, "Okay." Let's do it at the time you've said is the time you are free. Brilliant. But if you scroll back through all the, the messages I've ever sent between me and Mads, it is just replies to weird memes or little things that he's posted <laughs> up. <laughs> and that's all it is. Just go back. and I. So um, it's nice to have like a proper conversation with you. Uh, and I didn't realize how deep this conversation may go because you were telling us that you've been sitting out of the open for yeah. quite a serious reason. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the weirdest thing happened in the uh, end of or beginning of, of, of October. We went to Greece with the box for a training uh, for a training week. Came back. I wasn't feeling super like super hot. Um, just kind of felt tired. I uh, wasn't super motivated. I was just like, you know, every once in a while you have these periods. And my wife was then like, you should go to see a doc, go see a doctor. I'm like, I'm not going to go to a doctor. Eventually went to see the doctor and the doctor's like, we need to take some blood samples because you've never visited a doctor before. I was like, no, I've never been sick before. So I haven't had to. Then I went home. Everything was fine. And uh, that night at like 11 o'clock, I get a, a call from the hospital there. You need to come in right now. I'm like, I'll come in tomorrow morning. What happened? They're like, you did some tests. You need to come in right now. I'm like tomorrow morning. They're like, no, now. Then I get in there get to the emergency room, sign in, and they're like, oh, that's you. And then they just kind of pass me through. I'm like, this isn't good. So at that point, it, it turns out that I've got kidney failure. Um, oh, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know this at that point. So they start giving me an IV. I'm like, what, what's up? They're like, something with your kidneys. We don't know what it is. They get about a bunch of blood work done. It turns out I have an autoimmune disease or that it's, I've gotten an autoimmune disease which attacks my kidneys and potentially your lungs with me. It's just the kidneys. It's called good pastures. Um, and d despite the, uh, the, the, the cool name, it's, it, it's, I guess it's, it's pretty gnarly. So when I got in there, I, they, they think that I had 3% kidney function left. Um, so I was, I was in a pretty bad spot. Um, so yeah. And, um, so I've been getting a bunch of treatment. I've had chemotherapy. I'm done with chemotherapy, but I'm still getting a bunch of drugs to try to try to basically just make sure I don't get those the, those autoimmune responses back and, and they start chewing up my my kidneys. But yeah, it's a good thing you didn't lose your hair. I know, right? But it grew, <laughs> it grew in my nose and right here. I don't know what happened with that. Dude. Damn, that's backwards. Here. What I the know. hell kind of name is Good Pastures? That's a fucked up thing. Dude, it's like nothing good about sense. that. When they said it, I was just like, oh, so that's a good thing. They're like, no, it's not. And so it's this really weird thing. It's like less than one in a million has they get this. So there's, it's not like they can tell me this is what's going to happen when you have it, um, which is good because if you Google it, you're going to find pretty soon that mortality rate is pretty awesome when it comes to good pastures. And so I didn't Google it, obviously. I just kind of went day by day. But Damn, yeah, dude. How are you feeling now? Well, if, that's the weird thing, right? So I got in and I got the IV and I felt good. And I've been feeling good ever since, which is the weird thing about whatever happens to your kidneys is you, you don't feel bad. It's just like, okay, I'm not, I didn't, I went and worked out the day before I did some echo bike intervals and some deadlifts and I was feeling, and my recovery is taking a bit longer than it usually does. This is weird. Now I know why. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. Did it, but, so uh, how long was the chemo? Uh, the chemo was for th uh, two, almost three months. Wow, dude yeah so not as enjoyable as you could think <laughs> so you're you said you're i bet so you're all done with that already yeah i'm done with that already so now it's just taking medicine and, and then trying to i think i've recovered pretty much as much as i can um and and kidney function function has somewhat recovered but i mean i'm probably gonna have to have kidney transplant at transplant at some point uh, i just don't know when but we'll see dang dude yeah Wow. came out of nowhere it's like like i said it's like this was on a wednesday i had plans for a thursday i guess they got screwed <laughs> <laughs> i mean like you seem to be in good humor about all of it but it's it is you know and i don't want to stop that because i think that's a, a good attitude to have 
But I mean, even the way you pitch the story initially is like, oh, the weird, this weird thing happened. And you're like, yeah, that yep. that is a pretty weird thing. Um, and I probably would is. have been more extreme in, in describing it than weird. But um, yeah, I guess they don't know what what triggered it. Like, it's just no, no. But I mean, here, here's the thing. I mean, without getting too much into it, kind of weird details. But at the, when I was doing the last chemotherapy, the nurse came in and she's just like, oh, my God, I can't believe you had this and or you have this and so sad for you and yada 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 and it's just like can we just stop for a second mm. obviously i wouldn't want to have this condition if i could just erase that that'd be great but that's just the way things are can't do anything about it but do you have any clue how grateful i am i'm grateful that my wife sent me to the doctor you know that the doctor didn't send me home with like here's a headache pill come back in a week we'll see what happens that the blood whoever did the blood works started testing for all these different things i get to a hospital where they have great treatment for kidney failures and kidney you know, kidney diseases all together. So, I mean, there's so many things that could, again, that could have not happened and I could have died as a consequence, whereas it didn't. And so I'm here. I've got classes at Nordic, you know, I'm hanging out with my friends. So I'm more than anything, I'm just, I'm, I feel super grateful. And also I was in fairly good shape, not as good as Bill, but I was in fairly good shape before this happened. And I think that gave me a little bit of a margin as well. So, I mean, it's just like, like a good friend's at, this uh this equipment company say just don't weaken you know because it it, it gives you margins to deal with whatever happens uh when it happens and i i just feel more than anything fortunate that all these good things happen to me obviously not good pastures but everything else yeah despite the name uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i do always <laughs> think that's interesting isn't it because like that's the name we, we will get something and it will like really hit you hard you know and, and, and you'll be like oh man like my fitness now isn't what it was and you know i'm really struggling to get back to where i am and i always think yeah but like where you were when you got knocked down if you'd been just kind of you know like the majority of the population and you got the same thing how far down are you getting hit then and oh, you know, what chance do you have of getting back anywhere near to kind of functional um, i mean you know you yeah. know how many times at least in our community in the crossfit space that we've seen people either get in car i mean like you know miranda getting in a car accident way back when with a broken neck and doing you know yeah. being at the games doing all the broadcast stuff with a broken neck and then got called in because her yeah. neck was like you know that same thing with you like but the also, methodology didn't get, was didn't was she that? get called like didn't she get a phone call like at just before picking up picking up a yoke that like if she oh yeah she was working gone, out stuff if she'd yeah. like gone with that yeah she was working out probably would have been real bad yeah you yeah. know um but that like the real life version of, you know, the, the uh, sickness, wellness, fitness curve that we have yep. in the methodology of CrossFit. And I mean, it, this is what, you know, in, in our weird space with all the political stuff that happens and all the price increases and who, who the CEO is now, then or whenever, and all the, you know, the, the other dumb things that happen, um, it's that stuff right there that keeps me in yeah. because it's like, I, I believe in what the methodology is because the shit works. And, and, you know, granted, and, and to your point, like the way you, and you, you just, you're naturally like this, Matt. I mean, I've known you for a while <laughs> and, and you naturally are kind of like, uh, you're not stoic because it's not that you're stoic because you, you you do you are stoked in the fact that like you can only handle hand you can only control what you can control, yep. but you always have a very positive attitude on whatever it is that you're doing. And I think that like that you're very um, uh, conscious 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 of that when you're doing it, which is huge. Um, but I mean that that's why I keep picking up the CrossFit flag every single time yeah. because I see it all the time. You eat a certain way. I mean, you take a hundred words of fitness. And you have you have anything bad in your world you do with a hundred words of fitness, and that is it. Yeah. Eat the right way, eat whole foods, do high intensity exercise, do all these different lists, get yourself outside doing different things and trying different things, and you will hedge against things that are bad. Doesn't mean bad things won't happen. It means you'll have a hedge against those bad things yeah. from happening. Absolutely. But and even beyond the hundred words of fit, I can I agree a hundred percent with everything you said. And I think that's the reason. I mean there are so many funny stories. Like I was in the hospital and I was still trying to get my 10,000 steps every day. I brought, 
<laughs> I brought rubber. I brought, CrossFit I brought geek. Legs. You're a CrossFit geek. And then I got rubber bands in there so I could do some pulling exercises. And then I had this drain <laughs> in my arm. So it's like I had to do it with a straight arm. And it was, and the doctor's just like, you're an idiot. <laughs> doesn't matter and i'm just like this is for my mental health kind of thing um but beyond that i think there's a, there's another point to it as well when when all of this happened i told jenny i was like when when anything bad happens to you you always hope that somebody will come out of the woodworks and they'll help you but at the same time you're also you know, I, I also had in the back of my mind that everybody's got their own things that they're that they're kind of fighting with in their regular life with their job with their significant others with their kids whatever it may be so you can't really expect anybody else to come out and start helping you. I mean, it just it doesn't, doesn't work like that. So I told Jenny, for those of you who don't know, that's my wife. Um, I told her, I'm like, I think we're going to be on our own. But, you know, with a little bit of luck, maybe somebody's going to be help us, going to be able to help us at some point. But let's just not assume that that's what's going to happen. The support that we have gotten from, from our CrossFit community without ever asking for it. And that's like in terms of taking care of our son who's in the box, just walking up to him, taking care of him driving like driving jenny to different places taking me to different places making sure that jenny didn't have to go to go and have classes because she wanted to be in the hospital coming to the hospital even though it was not opening hours and then pressing their nose against the the, the glass because they couldn't get into the, into where i was all those things people on an everyday basis getting up writing a little text every morning being like hey dude hope you're okay she's like it's the most insane thing i've ever experienced in my entire life and that's a community Mm -hmm. of people who just inherently care for each other has nothing to do with who the ceo is what how they finished in the open whatever brand it is you're wearing on your shoes has nothing to do with that it has to do with the per kind of person that you are and our community is full of that and i've just got so much love for that yeah well and you you've been on teams i mean you know what it is when you sweat with people and you yeah you 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 get uncomfortable with people I mean, you know, I was a wrestler forever. I mean, you were doing your rest, your fighting stuff for, I mean, forever. You're, you're, you're that, that wrestling kind of thing. So it's a, it's not, it's a team sport, but it's very yeah. individual. But yeah. like when you sweat with people like that, it doesn't, what's so cool is that you get people from all walks of life where none of that shit matters. Your age doesn't matter. Your social, economic, whatever, how much money you have in your bank account um what your college degree you have that you have or you don't have or whatever everyone just knows that they've experienced the same pain and yep. they're there for you and that's <clears throat> that that's that that's that cross the community we have that which is great well Especially that within the walls of the box which is huge well you say yep. that and then i think that's what loops back to the open you know we were talking about the open before and um i was trying to i was yeah i was explaining to a member what the open was the other day um, cause they sort of seen the Friday night light stuff going on and they were a bit sort of, Oh, but I, if I haven't signed up, can I still go? And I'm like, yeah, you can. And, you know, explaining how it works. Um, and I, I just said, Oh yeah. You know, like the other year we were talking about it. And I said, for example, the other year there was this workout that was uh, shuttle run and burpee pull-ups and someone walking past just goes, Oh, that was, that was horrific. <laughs> I hated that. <laughs> and so we're, we're talking about it. And then I'm like, and I said to him, you know, another thing about the open, the fact that it's global and we're all doing this is you could go and drop in at any box anywhere on the planet and just mention to them you know, 24.1 or 23.2, whatever. And they'll know what you're talking about. And I said, you know, they'll have that reaction, right? That she, yeah. you know, just walking yeah. past, heard it and knew exactly what I was talking about. And then I'm kind of pointing at the whiteboard and being like, you know, the workout we've done today, you can talk to anyone at the box about that. And they'll be like, oh, do you remember the one we did on Wednesday? Yeah, that was, you know, really tough. But it's like that, but for anyone that does CrossFit and you've, <laughs> yeah. you've all been through the same thing. I mean, we all remember like now, you know, 24.1. It's like, oh, people going like, oh, it's the first time I ever used. I met so many girls. It was like the first time they ever used a 15 kilo dumbbell in the workout. And then you're like, yeah. And they made you do 21 in a row on one arm. <laughs> <laughs> and then another 21 for good measure. So it's like, I think that really, you know, and again, we lose that when we start to look at the open as, no, oh, I don't know if this was the best test of fitness or oh, I don't know why they did all the, you know, the open announcement wasn't really what I was hoping for. And it's like, okay, all of that is valid, but still there's this wonderful kind of connective tissue that runs across the whole global CrossFit community because of the open. Yeah. So let's not kind of, if we, you know, if you start complaining and criticizing and breaking things down too much, you get to the point where it just goes away. Well, but that that right there is why it's so important to have all that. That's why it's not a one piece deal. It's yeah. not just 
Okay, it's recess time, and let's get as many people to come out and do something because we're going to be qualifying. And it's 25%, so it doesn't matter what we do. And, you know, we're going to have the, the, the best of the best are going to do whatever, but it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to do the open announcement, and we're not going to really care what it – like, it, it is important because that's our community. Our community is used to everyone doing the same thing your version of whatever it is. Everyone gets their name on the board. Everyone sees the good people in the gym or the new people in the gym all battling it, at doing their thing at that time, that we can all talk about it, that we have something exciting to feel like it's our own fight club. So yeah, there's 300 whatever thousand people that are doing it, but it's our small little group. We're yeah. the ones that are doing it. Other people can try it. Other people can like, well, we're not we're not doing the open, but we're doing the open workouts because we're going to fine. But you're not in like this. Here's the group. And so it is important. And I that's what's hard is that it I feel a lot of times it gets turned into, well, it's just community. So it's eh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, no, it all matters. It, it, it does matter. The bigger the pool, I think the more important it is at the games. It's easy. Because you know exactly, like, you know exactly who you're testing. Then you can pinpoint the things that you want to look for. But when you have a, a, only a, a handful of events and you want to make it exciting, you want to make it inclusive, you want to make it fun, you want to make it right so the right people move forward, you want to make it um, memorable, um, you know, you don't have to. And, and no bad on Seth Rollins. I mean, I'm glad they brought someone big in. That was cool. But like, you don't have to have a big sequin jacket. That doesn't make the open. No. You know what I mean? I I have um, I have some thoughts about that about the announcement. Um, and hopefully, <laughs> if if all things if all things run well, I can say them now because you're going to tell us that you got a big sequin jacket and you're going to no, put no, no, hand no. Hand <laughs> I um, <laughs> no, I, I'm hoping that. This comes out on Friday, and if in an ideal world, I will have written, recorded, edited, and uploaded a video by Wednesday, <laughs> oh. uh, talking about that that announcement because it was the wrong week. Basically, if I if I have to break down the whole Seth Rollins thing, it was just the wrong week. That that's the, the simple answer to it. Is um, I understand why CrossFit went with that. You know, he's got like four million followers on Instagram. He's bringing in people that are interested in him and fitness, and maybe like new eyeballs on CrossFit. Did so, he? So, well, that's th that's four million point. people. Did four million people come no. in and watch? No, obviously not. But my, but even if you know, you re I understand CrossFit's reasoning is, you know, we use this kind of he's a big star in his own right. He's got ties to the CrossFit community. And he could bring fresh eyes onto CrossFit and maybe that's some people. And I'm thinking, yeah, great. That you know, you're you're into fitness, he's your favorite wrestler, he he's doing this announcement about a competition. You go, you watch it, you're like, oh, this is great, an interesting oh, it's an online competition, so I can even do it where I am. It's just twenty dollars, brilliant. Sign me up. Oh, I can't because it's already started and we're in week two. Do it in week one. Like have Dave week free and have the diehard CrossFit fans like in anticipation of Dave if you want oh, to I do see it that what way. Saying. I see him. And oh, then you, you're being too nice. And then you bring in a wrestler. Now, you know, I'm not a huge wrestling fan, but even I know that like WWE wrestlers stand in the middle of a ring in a arena full of people, and even when they're talking one on one they're very much aware that there's an arena full of people and they are playing to the crowd. So you hold it in a home gym with a tiny crowd. So when, <laughs> exactly so when he's right. like, yep. and he, you can hear in the way he's announcing it, he's leaving moments for the crowd to react. Yeah. There's no crowd. Right. Well, there's a tiny yeah. crowd again, you know, week one, at least you had four athletes going, you had a bigger, you know, they should have just found the biggest affiliate available packed it with people and you know made it a spectacle if that's the route you want to go or just you know done it how yeah, they did with dave and do that every week i don't know but week but two to, it just doesn't make sense point. yeah no but to bill's point here's the thing had there been a script of what it is you're trying to achieve with the open that could have either made sense or not made sense 
Yeah. I mean, this this whole announcement rubbed me wrong in so many different ways. First oh, of all, it's let's like, dig into this. <laughs> it's it's first of all, the, 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 the first thing I wrote because somebody's like, what do you think about the announcement? I'm like, well, once again, I'm just being painfully aware that unless I am a a WWW, whatever, whatever, whatever wrestling hillbilly redneck, this isn't the sport for me. Because apparently those are the people we're trying to reach. And obviously that was ignorant as hell. So I kind of calmed down after a while. I, <laughs> I kind, of let, kind of let the coffee kind of sink in. Um, and then I was just like, why are we doing this again? Is, is the open, is it a show where we're trying to show the world anything? Or is it, uh, is it a continuation of events that will eventually crown the fittest on earth if you, if you use our methodology? Is that what it is, we're, what we're trying to do? Is it a marketing event? Is that what we're trying to do? Is it, are we trying to make, you know, what is it that we're trying to do with all of this? This was a perfect spot where you could, all these affiliates who've just gotten their affiliate fees raised, by the way, maybe we could do something for them, but I'm pretty sure none of them were served by this wrestler who's probably the nicest guy in the world. I mean, he even did the open afterwards, which I liked, but I'm just like, what is it that we're trying to do with these different things? And that's where it's like the whole thing with HQ, the confusion for me with HQ is like, what is it you are trying to do? I just can't see the red thread in it right now. And that was just, it was just a shot in the head for me. But he but didn't you... come off right. And he's probably the nicest guy in the world, but he wasn't served right by it. Community wasn't served right by it. Boxes weren't served right by it. And then, frankly, the two athletes weren't served great by it either. So I'm just, yeah. So that's. What you, you, you think of the first one? I loved it. I, I was like, that's that's nice. First of all, because I saw Dave again, and I, that made me happy. I think that's yeah. probably what it was. <laughs> <laughs> to I be agree. honest, I was like, that's probably what it, I didn't understand the whole, the, the, the hints. I'm sorry, Dave, if you're watching this at some point, you're probably not. The hints were just, they didn't do it for me, but I was stoked to see Dave back and made me happy. Yeah. Yeah, the the, no, the the mushroom was not. There's no, there's no link <laughs> at all. I I put out a video on that as well, and I was like, it doesn't matter how I many times that. you draw a mushroom on a whiteboard, that doesn't mean your hint was valid. It could like, have had the the like the pyramid of Giza too, and had the exact same shape. <laughs> and also, <laughs> yeah. somebody sent me like the programming written down. I mean, like, there's the shape. And I said, if I walked into any CrossFit affiliate and looked at the whiteboard, and that's how they'd written out like that workout on the whiteboard, I would turn around and leave. Because that is not how anybody writes out movements in a You know, in a what's workout. funny is when he said, he's like, you know, I have a clue, but I, I think it would just be too obvious too if I obvious. put it down. I was like, that's how you think that's obvious? Okay, well, at least you're going to have to have three mushrooms, man, because it's 21, 15, 9. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. It's, but get uh, pro- three mushrooms yeah. that get progressively smaller. Right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah, now I see it. Now I see it. Super Mario mushrooms that get progressively smaller. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. What did but, you think yeah. of the first one, Bill? Uh, I, I liked it when they got to the actual workout. All this oh. stuff, all the stuff before the, we're going to have three events. We're going to have this little mini workout or this mini competition. Yeah. Um, we're going to, what I was saying when we were talking about it with on some of the other platforms was I felt like it diluted what they were trying to do. Like, are we yeah. trying to watch nasty girls? Does that matter? Is that now going to play into the programming that what happens with the particular event that's going to come up all the way to, they go to the event right before the, actual event and they do the repeat of um what was that one 11 11 3 the uh squat clean thruster or the uh squat clean and jerks in seven minutes or five minutes yeah and they obviously knew what it was and they obviously came up with a game plan of how to game it for all of them and it it went from one of my favorite workouts of what it is to a butchering of it. And no one understood what was happening with it yeah. at all. I mean, nobody is this, is this 24.1? Why are they all doing it synchronized? What what's happening? So it was really confusing, but once all of that stuff cleared out of the way and Dave got in there, I mean, whether the, whether the, the hint means anything or not, um, no, 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 no. Sorry. It's just not, fun. Not whether, uh, not whether uh, it means anything or not. It doesn't mean anything. But, <laughs> just... However, the, the speculation that, that, in, that ensues is always just, I think, fun. Let, let everyone just kind of nerd out on it, which is fun. But I, I, I like seeing Dave on there, too. I like the crypticness of the way he puts it out there. I like that he 
does these weird kind of piecemeal things and then eventually kind of lays it out and is like, and 24 point, you know, whatever, whatever the event is, is and lays it out. It's like, I, I, it's fun. It's fun yeah. for me because that's where I came from. So yeah. to me, that's like home. Like, yeah. you know, I, I don't go to church all the time. I was raised Catholic, but it was like, if I go to church and it's Easter or Christmas and I get there and it's just a, it's a very homey kind of feeling, you know what yeah. I mean? Th there's theatrics there. But it's 100 percent they're theatrics Dave's theatrics. That you, exactly that you're familiar with and you feel comfortable with and that's where like seth rollins has theatrics and they are the typical wrestler theatrics and it doesn't sit right with you because you're like that's that's not what i'm used to you know i'm used to, to dave being a bit weird that's fine but well you're this right guy, he's not he's not crossfit weird he's the different type of weird and well, it's it, it, i think you na you nailed it that they put him in the wrong arena no. Like yeah. he should have had an he should have had been in a in a location where he could be as loud as he possibly can. And then and, I mean, and, you know, usually it used to be like the old days, like they're, like Kiki would be kind of the MC or when they did the last garage workout when they did it at, um, uh, with, at Dan, with Dan Bailey and BKG. Mm -hmm. uh, Rory was kind of the floor announcer guy in, you know, in the garage there wasn't really at least that I could hear an announcer on the floor of saying what was happening. So you could have had, if you would have had a bigger gym, more people, you could have had Seth Rollins just getting loud and, and all WWE, you know, Oh my gosh, he's doing this. And I, if I would have done, you better watch how cold and I'm coming for something. 20 minutes of silence. The rope is jumping <laughs> in the rope. <laughs> then ten pop 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 pop. Like twenty minutes of that. It's like a metronome. It's it's it 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 just. I felt bad. I felt bad. I felt bad for the the whole thing, and I didn't really like the workout for what it was in the programming. So like I was having a hard time not being irked. It's a fun workout. I did the workout. Yeah. It's a fun workout. Like cool, whatever. I mean, it was much better for me than twenty four point one. Like <laughs> on a, on a, <laughs> like percentage wise, where I ranked. Like that was. That was that's, I mean, I can do double unders, so that that already, <laughs> that already like that's you know, that's the race. If, if you, you know, can if do, if you're a tall guy and you got double unders, you're in the running. Totally. Well, I'm a, I'm a short guy and I've got double unders, so <laughs> I get a, a you know a mediocre score, but it's fine. Um, yeah, but no, it, I, yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Just the, you know, I, I, I don't know, it, it, and and I think it goes back to what you both have said is like maybe it makes sense if we know what the goal is but if we don't know what the goal is it's very hard to know if it makes any sense at all anyway but um but hey the the announcement that they did last night for 24.3 that was fantastic right guys we really loved that one so um yeah, yep was, that was best uh, anticipating for people listening to this on friday that, <laughs> 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 that was good i was like what are you talking about did i miss something i'm like oh, yeah. i don't remember see this anything. is a problem bill you've slipped now into just filming just doing these live I and know. so everything you you've forgotten the the time travel aspect of uh, <laughs> pre-recorded podcast and i'm just being polite and i'm just like i'm just tagging on we'll we'll even out this these things later we'll there you go there later. you go yeah. <laughs> uh, well i i know that bill has coaching to do coming up so um we're gonna have to start wrapping things up uh, fairly soon um but it's been a pleasure to have you both on um and, and Maz, what a revelation <laughs> i feel really bad now <laughs> Oh, you I don't want to get you on because he's a fun guy, and I, I, actually, I I'd wanted you on for a while, and I was thinking oh, I need to ask Matt to come on. I need to ask him to come on, and then again, our the only way we communicate is through me responding to your stories. And there was like a picture <laughs> of you with a microphone recording something. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and this would have been Wednesday. I was like, when are you when are you coming on the podcast? And you're like, anytime you want. Like, how, how about Monday? Like, yeah, great. <laughs> <It's> like, <okay." laughs> Yeah, my yeah. calendar is really wide open right now. No, but well, I mean, now hey, I know. This is, yeah. this is this this whole thing. There's nothing for anybody to feel sad about. This is this is actually pretty awesome. I mean, I would have, I, I couldn't, I could have probably done with a post-it note instead. Hey, hey, you need to change your life and do stuff that you enjoy. But now I'm only doing stuff I enjoy, to be honest. So I'm back at Nordic. I'm coaching. Left the office job. Don't see myself going back anytime soon. Good I man. get to hang out with people I love. So hey, you know, it's good stuff. You're awesome, dude. You're What's awesome. the uh, any well, any future you, plans? Anything we should be looking out for then, Mads, or is it just uh, you sort of there, kind of stationed where you are now for a little while? 
No, I mean, there are a couple of things that are on that are incoming right now. Um, you saw me in, in a podcast not too long ago. We're kind of evening out. Uh, or we're, we're kind of in the process of, of ironing out a little bit how we want to do our own podcast because there isn't really one that there are a lot in Scandinavia that are great, but I think they should kind of, we should have a bigger outlook. So probably want to do something along those lines. Um, I'm going to start coaching again. I'm going to start teaching some, some, there are a couple of schools that do personal training courses and stuff like that. So I'm going to start teaching. I'm going to start giving lectures again. I've taken on some nice. athletes, which is also good. Um, so, yeah. And I just met with a really exciting guy today uh, who is um, the Swedish version of who dares wins. He's one of the instructors and has a pretty impressive uh, background. And, and we're discussing some pretty cool things that will probably happen within the foreseeable future as well. So that's pretty cool. So, so the question of, are you slowing happy. down was no, absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> totally no, ramped it up just no. in a different direction. But that, dude, that's so good. Yeah. I'm glad you're teaching wanna, again. Dude, I just want to do things with people like you guys, that people I, I enjoy. And I also really want to pay back to this community that took care of my family when I was in a weird place so well. Um, so that's the very least I can do. It's awesome. Yeah. It's always nice when you get a guest on and you're like, oh, I can quickly mark that name down as a potential multiple future guest. <laughs> 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 Apparently he's got free time Grumbler. and he's happy to come on podcast. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm like Phil, Grumbler, it's almost impossible to get on. Because hey, hey so you get me at 10, 15, it'll be fine. I mean, the open <laughs> season's a little weird. Chase hit me, to, he hit me last, yesterday and he's like, He's like, hey, are we going to do a uh, 24.2 wrap up tomorrow? And I go, well, I got Jason in the morning. He's like, oh. Okay, cool. We can do it at one thirty. Then I'm like, okay. Hold on. What did he? Yeah. What did he say after? Oh, well, because he wanted to do the ten fifteen time. Well, and I go, yeah. no, dude. I, we, I we got, I got to get this one with him. He's like, okay, cool. Yeah, I tell you, if so. you cancel that to, for Chase, I would. That would be. It. <laughs> <laughs> that would be it. like the the Chase Jason rivalry would just have that would that would have it, it would have peaked at that I, point. I, you yeah, would, you would I'm have actually going on with Chase this afternoon, so uh, you we're we're good, we're good. I was yeah. able to kind of move some stuff around and make that one. Are you going live? Yeah, we'll go live. Yeah, what what time is that? Uh, one thirty our time here, so that's gonna be two hours. In two hours, oh, so, oh, nice. okay. I'll make it home. I'll be in the joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Hop in. You gonna jump in? I'll oh, see you there in the comments, Matt. <laughs> I'll be in the comments. We can start trolling alone. them in the comments. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, uh, so Bill, where, so that's get with the programming. I'm assuming yeah. the people yeah, can find yeah, you yeah. there. Uh, they can follow your Instagram and find you shooting arrows at things. Not people generally, but you know, targets and, and it, stuff. Yeah, target stuff. Yeah, doing yeah. some work. That, that's kind of a new. That's kind of new, a new thing. Uh, um, yeah, I've been shooting now for I don't know nine months maybe, and oh. um, dude, it's fun, man. It's so fun. It, it's. I, I want. I've always wanted to do it. I had a buddy, uh, a college roommate, that that he started shooting a bunch, and he kind of pushed me over the edge to get a bow. And um, it just fits right into a lot of the old school kind of purestness stuff of like the old CrossFit stuff, and in you know the accuracy part of. And I'm not doing it because I think it's like a game thing or it should be in all competitions. But I do want to be able. I think it would be really. Um, uh fun is the wrong word but i think it would be really i don't know spiritual to actually go and hunt um hunt my own meat hunt just be able to do that that sort of a thing um in a way that it but i want to be good at it so like i'm learning how to shoot so that i don't i don't know stick an animal like in the heel or something like that and it's got to walk around with an arrow stuck in it and try to figure it out so i want to i want it to be a humane deal but i want to get good at it and it, there's that part there's the just seeing if i can even shoot while i'm tired while i'm in the middle of doing thrusters and burpees and you know ring muscle ups or heavy whatever and that's kind of fun um and then you should always i mean what do they say in 100 words of fitness try new sports often and it's a new one and it's 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 fun and plus i don't really like golf and so this is kind of my version of golf and there's a zen element to it too um uh, so i really like it um uh, but yeah so i'm doing that um i'm coaching i have my athletes that i'm coaching uh i have a handful that that i do uh, mostly masters athletes that i'm working with um that want to make that next step and that like the idea of not just doing a full templated version, but actually having a coach that understands what it takes to be a master's athlete and 
understands what a math master's athlete is. Um, so I have a handful of them that I'm working with. And then I got my gym, uh, CrossFit Inferno that I'm with a lot. I'm here <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and then just trying to be a dad, you know, I mean, I have uh, a 22 year old and an eight year old and my 22 year old is doing her thing. And my eight year old is, well, I mean, when I, when I have her, we're busy and it's fun. So yeah, having a good time. You're like trying to be a dad. I've got a 22 year old and you think, well, they, they kind of look after themselves to a degree. And then, and an eight year old, you're like, yeah, that's, uh, that's where the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they look after themselves a lot less than the 22 year old. Yeah, but come Do and hang out with it. Something at twenty-two though, because mine's tw- mine's seventeen, and I'm really looking forward to that point when it drops off. Uh, was say that what drops off? No, but I was just wondering, like at twenty-two, is is it where they're pretty self-going because our seventeen-year-old oh, yeah. is not? So I'm yeah, just, okay, so I've got five more years, and then I can just kind of yeah, no, off. totally. Yeah. I mean, I I, <laughs> so I figure I have two more two more years until mm-hmm. they say that like twenty-four, the brain actually becomes actual like full adult <laughs> brain. But I mean, you know, they, they get, they get a lot closer, which is good. Oh, I don't know. I I saw a clip the other day and somebody's like on the phone to their mum, sort of saying like about the kids and be like, Oh, you know, this is like, Oh, when do they, you know, when do they stop? When do they leave you alone? And they're like, well, you're 42 and you're phoning me now. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Um, But other than that, like, you know, get with the programming, Uh, me and Chase doing our programming shows and our analyzing shows. And we have our, it's been pretty fun that the new strength of field uh, show that we're doing on Wednesdays um, at 10 15 uh, Pacific time where we, we take the leader, the current leaderboard and use the open as a um, way to decide how many places people get in the games. So we're, Ooh. we're trying to, again, make it important for the open, make it to count. Uh, for these athletes so that the setting up the top 100 and then using the DeHunt method to uh, allocate the different positions. So that's been really fun and really interesting to play with. Um, and then I hop on with Sev on a bunch. I do a lot of the the stuff with him and the different shows there, you know, getting on there with like John Young and Hiller and Sev on and Matt Souza and uh, J.R. Howell and Pedro and just be, it's really fun being involved in that uh that arena with all those guys because we all kind of hop on everyone's shows and now jason are you, you you're moving into the scene there too man so i think I'm on I've your show i've in. described myself as uh in a circle adjacent once <laughs> <laughs> but you're there man you'll make it and then mads when you get your thing going too i mean with your personality yeah. you're going to be able to fit in with a lot of the shit talking that goes on with a lot of these things so it's good <laughs> it'll be yeah. good I look. I look forward to trying to jump onto your podcast, Matt, and be like trying to trying to work out what language is being spoken to me at any moment. Go, it'll oh, be I good fun. It'll, it'll be good fun. I'm, we're pretty we're pretty cool that way. We'll just switch languages at any given time and then see how long yeah. it takes before anybody picks up. The thing well, is, it would take me all of point zero seven nanoseconds <laughs> to know the difference if you're not saying Smith. So, yeah. see, the They're... best thing, Bill, would be when when I if if I don't switch and you just pretend that my English is so bad, it's like now you've done it again. I, I <laughs> I need I need a buzzer. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Nope. Get back to English. English is horrible. <laughs> the worst thing is when someone speaks to you in English and you still think they're speaking another language. And yes. I mean, it happened to me in Germany. Someone I was at like a you know driving through and I stopped somewhere to get something to eat and they said something to me and I didn't understand. I just replied, "I'm so sorry, I don't speak German." And they were like. I'm telling you in English. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I kind of wish I had that. I wish, I mean, I, I do get very uh, jealous of all my European uh, colleagues and acquaintances and friends because that's just not something that we have out here in America. I mean, yeah. like you go to school for a couple languages or whatever, and you don't, you do it just to pass the test kind of thing, not because you need it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I was I was, oh, was jealous but, of that. But but Engl- England is the same because we grew up thinking well every everywhere you go they speak English and they do which is annoying because <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're, they're sort of just fine. Um, and then I lived in Italy for ten years and I moved back to England and people were like well do you speak Italian I'm like oh, you know yeah I'm 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 okay I guess and then I'll hear people in England that speak Italian. And I'll be like, oh, if this is what we can speak, then yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazing. <laughs> but um, yeah, a little bit out of practice. But hey, who knows? Maybe I'll start. I'm crushing Italian now. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, I would really love to get you back on when it's not open season and we can actually talk about other topics that are. Yes. Uh, I mean, I should have, kn- Maz, I should have known if I just waved that little carrot in front of Bill about you. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just too much. I was like, oh, the open, let's go. <laughs> I should have just, let's not talk about the open at all. It's all wonderful. We're very happy with everything. It's great. But no, 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 no. But you can't get Bill Grunler on and not talk about programming. In fact, I no. Do you know just when he was talking about when he was pitching get with the programming and what they do, just listening to that, I'm thinking, I'm not smart enough to listen to that podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think you are well then let us teach you. Oh exactly. That's that's where you grow up. We're educators, right, Mads? That's what we do. Well, you are. I'm more of a fanboy. I'm, <laughs> that's, that's, to be honest, who gives so. lectures <laughs> right well, a fanboy that gives lectures being a fanboy so <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll happily jump onto that lecture then yeah okay <laughs> very good well i've taken up way too much of your time thank you very much thank you everyone for listening and uh, hopefully next week we'll have some guests and as i hinted to bill and mads and i because of how we started recording this i don't know if that's going to be in the show and people have heard it or not potentially we might start going live. So uh, let's see. uh, Watch this space. But um, until then, I'll see you next week, everybody.